NASDAQ CEO Bob Greifeld shook things up at the FIA Boca Conference with the announced plan to launch a new futures exchange that will focus on energies. He spoke with John Lothian News about the new pricing and clearing model, as well as his views on regulation, technology, and how NASDAQ is positioned going forward. The list of participants who are partnering with us is quite extensive and I think very uh, impressive. And I say the statement of the problem is this. We do not have a single customer who says, I would prefer to be in a vertical monopoly. I prefer to be in a situation where my open interest is trapped in a clearinghouse and locked into the trading venue. So that's the fundamental problem uh, we're trying to solve. But you see that as a result of that, uh, where there's been limited competition because of these vertical monopolies, you have a capture rate. Uh, that is quite high. And I would posit to you that most of the benefits of becoming electronic and evolving from open outcry have actually accrued to the exchanges and not to the trading participants. So our effort is really to kind of democratize that return on the electronification of the markets. To put numbers on it, in our equity options business, equity options, about 20 cents per contract. Uh, you see the average rate in the uh, energy complex is about $1.30, $1.40. 20 cents to $1.30, $1.40. We certainly think a competitive dynamic will give a better return to uh, you know the trading participants. The regulatory impact uh, for the exchanges has been somewhat uh, uh, neutral, you know, at this point in time. So it hasn't been a big change in life that we uh, we see, but we certainly have to be, pay very close attention to what these regulatory changes have to our customers and their then attendant behaviors. So we watch that very closely. Obviously. Prop trading firms within the confines of a large bank, that's a declining uh, activity. But that activity will show up in other guises and other for organizational forms. So we have to make sure that we're in close contact with those new organizations and have them become active members of our markets. We've spent a lot of time focusing on the actual uh, performance of the systems. We're proud to be in microsecond response time to order flow, and we're proud that we can handle big bursts of order flow while ke keeping a consistent uh, user experience and that's been a challenge for us and so we feel very good about that positioning we want to keep the attention up to continue to go down that performance curve but we also recognize we want to have a flowering of things that we can do from a technology point of view so you'll see us use more uh, system software coming from California based firms primarily applying that to the financial services industry so we're really focusing on broadening our innovation in the space, right? So we've innovated in speed, we've innovated in throughput, we've innovated in reliability, but there's other things we need to do. Almost 90% of our revenue is derived from businesses where we're number one and number two. And I certainly believe that the vast majority of the profits available in a given sector goes to somebody who has that level of position. So we're very comfortable with our positioning. There's nothing we need to do. There's certain things we might like to do uh, to go our fran grow our franchise. Uh, but we can do that in a very reasoned manner, in a very thoughtful manner. And we always have to make sure that we're leveraging the mothership in some fundamental way as we branch into new activities.